Hello everybody, how are we all doing? I hope you're all doing really well. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and to another instalment in the house series. I haven't came up with a name with it yet, but if you've been following my journey for a while, you know that myself and Zara are taking the plunge. We are dipping our toes into the property market and hopefully in not too far from now, we'll own a house and we will be property owners, which is very exciting. I will leave the videos that I filmed prior to this where we announced the, what we, the plan was and also my finance video. I will leave that link down below so you can kind of catch up if you haven't seen them and then you're onto this one. So, hello, hi. If you are new here, my name's Luke. I'm 23 years old, I currently rent in London and I'm about to start my property journey and I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> no, in all honesty, I'm very excited. It's gonna be a really good journey. It's gonna be tough, but that's what this video is gonna be about. The last video I filmed, I think it was nearly two months ago, and in the UK, well, in England, the lockdown measures have slightly been lifted, and as such, there have been temptations. So this video is going to be all about how I am assessing my finances now, how I'm moving forward, things that have helped me, some limitations and difficulties, and where we're currently at financially. So, grab yourself a cup of coffee, a tea, a beverage, whatever you'd like, something stronger, and do join me in what is going to be hopefully a very concise, not so chatty video, but more so informative if you are currently on this journey yourself, if you have been on this journey, or if you're just interested to know where we're at. I'm gonna have a sip of my coffee. Ah. Right, let's get cracking. Okay, so we've made some notes. As you know, I always make my notes when it comes to these types of videos. And the topics that we're gonna be covering in this video are location, have we found somewhere in an area that we wanted to live, prices within that location, the current economic crash, that is about to happen and whether or not that's gonna benefit us or not. We're also gonna talk about things that have helped me in the past two months and also time frames. So that's what we're gonna cover in this video. So when I'm currently filming this video, it is mid-August and myself and Zara have been given a 18 month window within the property that we're currently in. So we've given, well effectively we've given ourselves 18 months. We're putting the time pressure on ourselves that by the two, by essentially January 2022, which is only 16 months away. Yeah, gosh, that's soon. It's effectively less than a year and a half. We will have acquired a property or have put the legal matters into place to have acquired a property. So, so the first point we're gonna talk about is have we found where we want to live? And the answer is yes. I'm sure Zara won't mind me putting this on the internet, but we have. And I know this was a topic of conversation. A lot of you have suggested a lot of places within England. Some of you even suggested, have you considered moving abroad? We'd love to, but I think for current family and also our careers, we want to stay within the UK. We've considered a lot of places. We considered the outskirts of London. We considered Surrey, Kent, we got further afield. We even, a lot of people were suggesting Manchester. I'm originally from Durham, so we didn't want to go that far up the country and Zara is from Plymouth. So, I can now announce that we have decided that we are moving to Bath. And oh my goodness, it feels very exciting and very nerve wracking to say that out loud, that potentially London, well, there's no potential about it, it's an inevitability that London isn't gonna be our home in the next two years. Well, it, it is, but it, after two years, I feel like I've said that wrong. Essentially, we're moving to Bath. I'm very excited to say that out loud, but I'm also very nervous. For those of you who followed me for quite some time, I've lived in London for over four years now and when it comes to six years, I think I'll have probably had enough. <laughs> there is a quote that says, if a man falls out of love with London, he has fallen out of love with life. I feel like there potentially might have been an Oscar Wilde. And I would agree to a certain extent, however, I would disagree. London is a, it's the epitome of busy. There is so much here, so much stimulus and culture, and food and events and people. I'm 23. By no means old, or getting on. <laughs> You're only as old as you feel. But for me personally, I just want to think about my future and my quality of life. And not to say that you can't have a good quality of life in London, but where we currently are, it's not where we want to be in terms of location, safety. Yeah, it, there's, there are a lot of elements. We really want some outside space, and in London, that's pretty hard to find. So, we're moving to Bath. It's very exciting. If you've never been to Bath or you have no idea where Bath is, I've done quite a few vlogs there. I'll link them down below and also up there if you want to check them out. But Bath is kind of in the 
western part of the well of England, it's southwest, it's near a city called Bristol. If you know where Bristol is, you're pretty much gonna know where Bath is. It is stunning, it suits us to a T. We absolutely love it. We know quite a few people who have lived in London and have moved to Bath. Perks of living in Bath are that it is within very good commutable distance to London, around an hour and a half on a train, give or take, and that gets you into Paddington, which is brilliant. It's safe, the properties are stunning, the people are very friendly, it's closer, not by much, it's only about 20 minutes closer to home for me, it's quite considerably closer to home for Zara, it's closer to our family around the Bath area. And it's just somewhere exciting that we really want to move to. So we've decided, and I know a lot of you will comment saying, oh, don't get your heart set on Bath, you might find somewhere else. But within the Bath area, drawbacks to Bath, it's very beautiful. And also with beauty comes expense. <laughs> it's quite expensive in comparison to, should we say, other parts of England. But still in comparison to London, it's very affordable. And within our price bracket, we should, all things considered, fingers crossed, be able to retain a property within the 350 to 400,000 pound budget that we've allocated ourselves. A three bedroom house, hopefully, with a garden. That's pretty much all we want. Everything else we'll worry about afterwards. As long as we've got a bedroom for myself and Zara, and a bedroom for when we have family and friends to stay, when we're allowed to, then that's all we want. So that's the first thing off the list, and that only took me eight minutes to say. <laughs> so the next topic we're gonna to talk about is prices. How is the market currently looking? Now I know this is kind of a, I'm maybe jumping the gun because in the current climate, property isn't doing particularly well. Zara actually works within the property field, I'm allowed to say that, her company, um, or within the property realm, should we say, There's a, interpret that how you will. And she has some insider knowledge as to the property market and it's kind of fluctuating in the minute. As everything is, the economy is kind of all over the place. They are anticipating a property crash potentially, which isn't great, obviously no crashes, you know, we don't wanna advocate them, but in terms of potential new buyers or new first time buyers, it could be a great chance to get a bargain or so they say. Stamp duty, if you aren't from the UK, is essentially a tax you pay upon a property. You don't pay stamp duty up until the first 300,000 pounds in the UK and then anything after that you pay a percentage. So our stamp duty should be really low. So in terms of our deposit, as I've said, we need to ideally save around £40,000. And just leading me on to the next topic, which we're gonna talk about is, how are we doing with saving? How is saving going? I'm kinda, I feel like this is gonna be the juicy part of the video and the part that a lot of you are very much supporting, but you're very eagle-eyed. So, as I'm sure a lot of you have quite experienced in England, if you are in England, the temptation is back. The restaurants are opening, the bars are opening, shops are reopening. London essentially is, at current stance, reopening. Which brings temptation. Which makes this saving thing a hell of a lot harder. <laughs> I would like to say that we make very conscious, very sensible, very good financial choices, purchases and decisions. However, we do pay, as I've said countless times, a astronomically large amount of rent to live in London. And whilst you live in London, you also have this wealth of stimulus at your disposal. As I've said, restaurants, coffee shops, bars, days out and our savings haven't been the best I'm going to be very honest and I know a lot of you do comment I thought you were saving for a house when I make a purchase as I've said I'm embarking on my law by year and I am in fact ahead of target when it comes to savings which is very very fortunate given what everything is going on and obviously within the 18 months the 16 months until we get this house our financial situations could quite easily change Hopefully they don't, and if they do change, I'd like to think they change for the better. But currently as it stands, I am ahead of my savings target as is Zara. It's really good, and in terms of actually acquiring a property, there is no such thing as having enough money. So, as tempting as restaurants are, and we have eaten out once in the whole time restaurants have reopened, the UK is currently running a eat out to help out scheme. I'm not sure if this is across the world, but it's essentially where the government reduce your bill by up to 50% in a restaurant on Monday, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, so you can eat out cheaper. It's just to kind of help the economy and kind of 
encourage you to go out and keep everything rolling. Myself and Zara did go out to one of our favorite Indian restaurants as a treat, and that's kind of been it. And we've said that's pretty much gonna be all we'll do for the month because we are saving for our house. And as you guys know, you need to be able to make small sacrifices in order to gain a long term gain, if that makes sense. So yes, we're saving. I'm still ahead of my target, which is fantastic. And I'm excited. So yeah, that's where we're at financially. The next thing I'm going to talk about is useful resources and things that I've found kind of in a form of inspiration and also things that have motivated me and educated me. So my friend Ewan, Mr. Carrington, you guys all know Ewan. If you don't know who he is, I will link him up in the top corner and also down below. He got me this book for my birthday and this is the how-to guide to get onto a property ladder, the property ladder. It's a first-time buyer's guide to financing and finding your first home and it's by an author called Ned Brown and it's recently published actually I think it came out last year it's self-published so this guy has basically put it out on the internet in 2019 it is a comprehensive guide if you are in the market for a book that is going to clarify everything you need to know about property within the UK I would honestly Strongly, strongly recommend getting this book. It's fairly modest in page numbers, um, 144 in total. Ewan, if you're watching this, thank you. This has changed my life. I felt there was so much information that I was lacking up here that's in here. I will link this down below. It's fantastic. There is everything in here from um, savings ices to shared ownership which obviously is something we haven't considered, but I don't think we would. Student loans, things like salary. So here it's got about your student loan and if your salary, so say you're on 30,000 pounds a year, your monthly repayments would be 32 pounds and six pence of your student loan. Debt, it, it, mortgage advisors, how to do a property viewing when you go and find your home, it's brilliant. This book has been a game changer. In terms of other resources, I haven't really read too many because as I say, it is still quite a while away, but things that I've found that have actually motivated me are Pinterest and YouTube. There are so many YouTube content creators out there who create videos about how to save. As I've mentioned before, Lara Joanna Jarvis is incredible. I'm still watching her videos and very much inspired by her ethos and the saving. But also I'm really enjoying property renovations as well. I'll link some channels that I've really been enjoying down below. And that's kind of like a subconscious I would say motivation. My friend Sam has just moved house as well and his new place is just incredible. And I said to Zara when we went and visited safely, obviously, we just said, wow, imagine living in a place like this. It had beautiful wall to ceiling, bifold doors, floor to ceiling, bifold doors. You, you know, you know the ones. It's a stunning, stunning home. And I said to Zara, imagine one day if we can get something like this. So I feel like I'm subconsciously inspiring myself and any purchase I am ever tempted to make I have to subconsciously check up here, is this going to benefit you and your purchase house goal? No, it's not. <laughs> it was a long-winded way of saying it, but basically that's, the, that's where I'm at. So that's essentially my journey and where I'm at now, just to round up summarize all of the above. We are very much ahead of schedule when it comes to the deposit, which is fantastic. I wouldn't like to say well done us, but effectively we're still renting in London. A lot of people do go back home to save for property and deposits, which I completely understand, but obviously that isn't feasible for us currently, both for our health and also for our finances. We need to be in London for our jobs. Also, yes, in terms of inspiration, as I said, I'll link everything down below. Bath Bath is now a place. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I genuinely am very excited to a, discover a new part of the UK and also just to put my roots somewhere that I've never called home before. London, I feel like I've grew up in London. I know I haven't. I moved to London when I was 19 years old, but for me, those, those, the past four years have been the most influential years of my life. I would argue they have been. I know I had a prior essential grown-up period in a restaurant industry and that taught me so much but in terms of actual maturation London has taught me everything. So being able to have the chance to say that I can now spread my wings into a new city and meet new people and go to new coffee shops and to have new neighbours and yeah it's gonna be exciting. Also one last thing I do want to address the situation of finance very it's a tricky one to talk about because I know everyone's financial situation is very different and with the current climate as it is a lot of redundancies are happening I do not want these videos at all at all at all to come across as me being um you know boastful of the position that I'm in 
Gratitude is something I will always put first and foremost as an emotion of mine and I feel so grateful, so, so grateful to be in this position at such a young age to be getting on the property ladder potentially. As I said, everything can change and I really hope it doesn't. But I hope if you are out there and your financial situation has changed, potentially you were in the market to move soon and you're watching this, please, please stay resilient and hope that I hope for you out there, if you're watching this and you're in a bit of a tricky situation, that things will get better. I really hope they do. But yeah, that, that's us. I just thought I'd give you guys a little bit of an update, a little bit of where we're at, location, money, that kind of thing. I'm very excited in case you can't tell. I've got a lot of energy and I don't know if that's just the coffee. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. As always, it's an absolute pleasure to bring you guys along on this journey. I hope you are enjoying these little update videos. I'm not gonna be doing them monthly. I'll just film them as and when I feel they're relevant or if something has changed or anything exciting, I'll pick my camera up, best believe. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed it and found it useful, as always, please do give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't clicked subscribe already, I say it every time. If you could click that little button down there, that would be amazing. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all very soon in another video. Bye for now.